Right, welcome back. Uh, sorry, Kennedy, I, I didn't see your question now because the reason is I project the notes, so uh, I don't get a beep or uh, I'm not able to check the messages. So, all right, so here's a question from Kennedy. Uh, do these cell groups meet in their leader's house or is it rotational among its members? What are the challenges in terms of space, connectivity, refreshments, and privacy? How do we handle 12 because it is relatively a big number? <clears throat> yeah. So, Kennedy, usually the life group leader, uh, the life group meeting happens in the life group leader's house. Right now, uh, sometimes the life group leader may say, uh, you know, uh, I have guests in my home or uh, they may say okay um, you know it's it's a little bit too much for me can we also uh, spread it out uh, can we meet in other people's house so it's it's open right if they want to meet in other uh, members house also it's open right so that's not a problem as long as the life group happens right so it can here at apc uh, it's usually the life group leader's house but there are times when um, they have met in other uh, within the life group, the life group members' house also, they have met, right? Because it's all uh, around the same vicinity uh, according to the location, like the area that they stay is all the same, uh, very close by. So, uh, yes. So to answer your first question, usually it happens in the leader's house, um, uh, but it can also happen in some of the members' house, right? Uh, that's an understanding between the life group itself uh, what are the challenges in terms of space connectivity refreshments or privacy right so for example there's a life group and there are you know maybe 12 people right and this life group member leader says hey my house is kind of small not able to manage 12 people uh, so not a problem what we normally do is we uh, will you know divide the group into two so we'll have a life group. This person will have six or seven people. And then we'll raise up another leader either within the life group or we'll raise up a leader around that area or maybe from a different area also, uh, somebody who's within our church. Raise up another leader and we'll ask them to start, uh, you know, to lead this life group. So now you have six and six, right? So in terms of space, you have, all right, six people, I think that should be uh, a, a good number. In terms of connectivity, some of our life, all our life groups actually meet based on locations, different areas in Bangalore. So we have North, South, East, West, and then we have wards in each of these uh, locations. So, so what happens is we, uh, you know, uh, we make sure that people don't have to travel like ten kilometers for a life for a cell group, right? Maximum two, three kilometers. Uh, and they're able to reach the life group. So that answers connectivity. Uh, refreshments. Now, this is something that uh, we did uh, mention when we have our life group leaders training. We tell the life group leaders, see, there's no compulsion of refreshments, right? Uh, if you feel you can't do it, it's all right, right? Uh, it's not, they're not, uh, you know, we're not meeting for refreshments. Uh, even a simple tea and biscuit. Is all right even if that can't be done it's all right right so we inform the life group leaders and that you know this is uh, this is not priority uh, but you know some of them just give tea biscuits some of them have some of some of the life groups after uh, the life group they have dinner and leave right some of them just have tea biscuits. some of them have a juice and uh, so all of that is uh, is there it is important uh, being hospitable to those who come to the life group uh yeah so basic refreshments it shouldn't be too much so even when there are times when some of them have come back to me and said you know uh i meet every week and every week giving refreshments uh it's a little bit difficult for me and it's completely understandable because there are 10 12 people right so it's going to cost them uh and every week they're meeting so i i said to him hey don't worry you don't have to do anything and i also uh, told, spoke to the life group members. I said, "See, this is the thing. Uh, uh, every week refreshments. Uh, 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 we may not have every week since. So I hope that's all right. Uh, but over time, what happened was people who are coming for the life group they started bringing snacks, and uh, you know some of them got a flask with some tea, and you know so that's all right. It's all just 
you know working together and uh, so and in terms of privacy uh, you know, this is again a challenge because there are times when we have life group leaders and in their homes they have their parents staying in one room uh, and then you know the maybe the in-laws are staying in another room and uh, and it's hard right uh, there's no privacy uh, so we keep it open we tell them right if, if you can't as a life group leader if you cannot host the life group in your house please let us know we can find somebody else who are willing to host the life group uh, host meaning they are willing to open up their space their home uh, but you will continue to be the life group leader because many times you know uh, life group leaders or cell group leaders they may have this feeling like if I say I'm not able to do this or I can't open up my house what if I what if they tell me not to be a life group leader anymore right so what we do is initially is we inform the life group leader. in the training itself we tell them everything feel free to get back to us just because uh, you know the life group can't happen in your house doesn't mean you're not a life group leader you're still a life group leader and uh, it's just that we're going to meet in another person's house so uh, so they are also you know they're comforted they know that okay can, because they really want to serve right uh, so Kennedy these are things that we normally do uh, and we do this before the life group starts so even before the life group, the leader knows that if in case something you know uh, I'm not able to have the life group in my house I have the option of you know asking one of the life group members or I can contact my life group coordinator to you know help me with this it doesn't mean that I will not be a life group leader to uh, uh, the the life group leader also knows that about refreshments right so okay if I'm not able to I can always contact the life group coordinator and I can also inform the life group members and uh, so that is why the training is very important when you when you when you choose a life group leader you need to explain to them all these things right uh, initially itself so their mind they know okay these are things I can do these are things I I should not be doing Kennedy I hope that answers your question <clears throat> yeah all right all right yes Christopher go ahead Oh, yes, uh, thank you, Pastor. I wanted to just find out with regards to uh, the, you know, the actual, uh, in, in the format of the, the life group uh, meeting, um, there is some, um, you had mentioned about this, uh, you know, like a sermon summary. Yeah. And um, I I remember that um, there used to be on the, on the website, there used to be something called a five, five minute uh, summary. And uh, that is, you know, that is used to, uh, you know, to be able to uh, provide the detail of the of the of the summary at a, of the of the sermon at a summary level. Mm. So I just wanted to. Uh, I was actually trying to do a search on this, um, and uh, I could not find it anywhere. So just wanted to understand: uh, is this actually provided to every uh, cell group leader? Yeah. Uh, you know, before their meeting, or uh, I mean, how is this done? Because um, it used to be there on the website, available to everyone, but now it's not there now. Okay. Sure. Sure. Thank you so much for that uh, question, uh, Christopher. Right. So I'm just as you were talking, I was just opening up the website. Uh, so what happens is, for example, we have this Sunday sermon, right? So the sermon notes are out. Uh, and if you go to the website, uh, I hope I can share. Uh, let me just see if I can just pull up that. Okay, just a minute, please. Right. So if you go to okay, resources. summits. Okay. So if you go to on the website, www.apcwo.org slash sermons, uh, so you have a list of sermons there. So last Sunday was plans, pursuits, and uh, pl purposes, plans, and pursuits. So there, if you go to notes, 
Uh, let me just project it for you. Let me see if I can download this and project. Uh, let's go down. Okay. Uh, hold on. Let me just download this. Desktop. I can show this to you. Sorry, uh, it's uh, just opening this. Okay. Um. Okay, everyone can see this, right? So this is last Sunday's sermon notes. And this usually comes up on Saturday, so the previous day, it will be on the website. Right? Uh, it's probably Saturday evening, it's already on the website. So this was a sermon that we preached last Sunday. So if you go down, you, this is a sermon notes. right? If you go way down, you will get to this place. So end of the sermon here, and then you have life group study guide. right? So in this life group study guide, you See, we just put a few things here. The life group may commence with a time of word, prayer, worship, and a fun activity. Uh, listen to God's word. Read the following scripture references. They can read these. These are basically the verses that were there in the sermon. Then, you know, they can start off with worship, do all of that. And then here are your discussion questions. See, uh, question one. Let me highlight that. Discuss the example of a life plan in the template that was presented. Are there ways you can improve upon this template? Are there other ways to help write out a plan and pursue God's purposes that can be useful? So you can probably you know, give them time, five minutes, 10 minutes. They can just write a few things. Right now, the sermon was is, is more a practical sermon, right? So it has these things of writing down. Then you have question two. Discuss the truth that seems to be paradoxical. Um, how do we live out this practically when pursuing the God's purpose for our life? Then you got question three. Uh, four factors we talked about. Uh, discuss a few pro practical examples how we can keep pressing towards um, the purposes of God as we navigate through. So you got the questions here. And then you got things like, you know, so obviously, after each question, you leave it open to uh, discussion, right? And you can share. Each of them can share their thoughts, share their, uh, uh, you know, uh, their inputs. And then, if time permits, each one can take a few minutes to share uh, fellowship by sharing with each other. Then you can encourage each other for praying and ministering to one another. Uh, so sometimes, what you can do is you can. All of you who just hold hands, pray together, or you can just make groups of two. If there are 12 people, groups of two, pray for each other. Uh, and then you can regroup together, pray together, uh, uh, pray for certain prayer points, and close with thanksgiving. So Christopher, this life group study material is available the previous day. So 20, on a 21st Saturday, it will be it was available. And, and so the life group leaders, all they have to do is download this uh, and just go down the life group study guide. They can either take a printout or they can just use their phones and uh, just follow this, these three questions. So basically, you know, if, you're, uh, if you have these three questions with you, it's more than enough, right? So you know how to lead the life group. And these are the main questions within the life group. Uh, uh, I hope that answers your question. Uh, uh, yes, uh, I I understand that part. Um, uh, but if you go if you go go one paragraph before that, uh, pastor, yeah, yeah. Uh, you will see that um, there's a mention, or right in the beginning actually, um, it's mentioned that, or the, in the in the when uh, you know in that section called preparation, mm -hmm. it says to prepare for the live group meeting. You can listen to the sermon key points, sermon summary in five minutes. That's what I was looking for. Where oh. is that? Is that? Okay, okay. So that is the video. So what, what we have is if you go to YouTube, so let me just see that. Uh, if you go to YouTube, 
I hope I have it here, not sure. Uh, so what happens is we usually have, a, I don't know if it's out yet, but we can see the previous ones. Mm. We usually have a five minute kind of a uh, four or five minute clipping of that sermon. Right. Uh, I'm not sure if I can find it now. It's basically the sermon highlights, right? Uh, so if you go onto YouTube, you should be able to find it there. Yeah, so there are some videos, but some of them have not yet come out. So yes, um, Christopher, to answer your question, there. If you go onto YouTube, you can listen to the sermon key points. Uh, basically, what the video editing team does is they. Um, so we we have the entire sermon, which is about like well, fifty minutes. So they take key points, you know, uh, do some editing, and they have a five minute sermon highlights. Right. So if you go to YouTube, I'm not sure if they've been doing it right now because I just went to YouTube. I didn't see last week's uh, five minute uh, highlights, but I do see some of uh, in the year 2022. It is uh, there are those uh, two minute uh, sermon highlights that are available. So um, that's something maybe I can talk to the you know the media team and check with them as to if they are planning to you know restart that uh but yes we used to have that you know out of the entire sermon five minutes just the highlights the important points you can listen to that um and uh you know just to help you so what but what i do encourage the life group leaders is listen to the whole sermon right it's only 45 minutes 50 minutes so listen to the whole sermon I can make key points as well. So, uh, but to answer your question, that video, that five-minute video, is uh, over the last few months. From what I'm seeing on YouTube right now, we haven't been doing it. Uh, but uh, I can check with the team, and if I can get your their feedback and get back to you on that, I hope that's okay, Christopher. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Okay, Kennedy has another question. As a church, how to evaluate and monitor the developments of a cell group? Example, SWOT or any other method since you have uh, mentioned a coordinator. Yeah, so some of the ways, uh, you know, initially as a life group uh, coordinator, what we used to do was we used to ask people to send in their feedback, send in their reports, right? So there was like weekly reporting. And the reports had, okay, this is what we did. Uh, we were 10 people. Uh, we started with worship for five minutes. We did this, this, this. These are the questions we discussed on. And we prayed and ministered to these, uh, to each other. And we ended with prayer. Now, over time, what happened was, uh, you know, those reports were, uh, it, it, it was not a way to check to know the progress of the of the cell groups. Uh, so what we did was we opened a WhatsApp group. We would uh, connect with each other. Right? So as a life group coordinator, what I would do was I would call the life groups. And I would ask them, hey, how did life group go? Uh, you know, once a month, I would just call them, hey, how's your life group going? Anything, you know, any uh, is everything OK? Are the discussions good? Are people coming? Are people being ministered to? Uh, you know, you have any questions, feel free to call me, feel free to email me. Uh, we don't do the SWOT analysis. Uh, so uh, because the SWOT analysis is it's going to be really, uh, you know, too much for the life group leaders. We want to make it very informal, but we also want to ensure that we are growing. So um, uh, so one of the main ways of, you know, is just by calling them, talking to them and we get to know. Right. Okay, the cell group. And sometimes what we also do is um, we we visit the life groups and we see what's happening, right? Uh, especially if it's a new life group, six, seven months or a few months old, we just go help out. Initially, we, uh, you know, uh, so for example, we last week we started a life group in a certain area, but uh, what happened was nobody was there. None of our church folks. 
uh, went to the life group. So the life group leader on Sunday met me and said, you know, we had prepared everything, but nobody came. Uh, so I just encouraged them. I said, don't worry. We did continue to talk to people and all of that. And over the week, we found out that there are two families who stay close by. So I just messaged them. I said, hey, why don't you, you know, connect with this life group? Uh, and I'm sure it's going to be a blessing. So they said, yes, we will definitely connect. So, so there needs to be this constant connection with the life group leaders, right? That's where the life group pastor or the life group coordinator has to do, right? He has to ensure that there's this one-on-one -on -one happening. You, you know, uh, people will uh, register. They'll say online, I want to be part of this life group. So you call that person, you email them and say, hey, this is a life group that's closest to you. So there's this coordinating work that uh, the life group coordinator has to do. Right? So that's how we evaluate, we monitor life groups. And, and of course, sometimes uh, if a life group is, you know, if it's not growing and if it's still, you know, uh, just two, three people, we encourage them to continue. But if the life group leader feels, uh, you know, he wants to, so he or she wants to stop, we, you know, we just tell them, hey, let us know. And if you want to stop, it's all right. Uh, right. So we don't take things personal. We don't say, oh, how can you stop God's work? All those things, we just keep it open. Right. So that's how we, you know, make sure that, uh, and over time, so something that we are planning to do this year is since we are growing in life groups, we have many, many life groups. We want to have life group uh, coordinators for North, South, East, West of Bangalore. So we have, so for example, eight life groups in the North of Bangalore, eight in the South of Bangalore, maybe seven or eight in East and West. So we, what we want to do is we want to uh, have life group coordinators for each. So one person, one life group coordinator will look after those eight life groups, right? uh, meaning he will uh, oversee all of them. Right. So that's something that we were planning to do this coming year. And we're going to work on that. Okay. Abhina says, uh, cell group is only for church believers or outside the church. So, People from our other churches can join, but here's what we tell our life group leaders in the training. People from other churches can join, but when they join, they must understand that APC has a vision. And in APC, we discuss the Sunday sermon. And in APC, this is how we do the uh, we follow the agenda. This is what we do as a life group. Now it's their choice if they want to come. But they cannot come and say, why you want to discuss this? Why you want to do this? Why you? No. They cannot do that, right? If, if they may be from another church, very good church. Every church has its, its essence, right? Uh, they may say, hey, you know what? In our church, we do like this. Why don't we try it here? You say no. Uh, so very important when people from other churches come, let them know, especially if they are already believers, let them know the first time they come, this is what we are doing. And if you're comfortable, you're free to come back. Right? Uh, but this is what this is how our life group is. This is how we will do it. This is how we've been doing it. This is how we'll do it. Right. So they know that things will, you know, things will not change just because they have come. Right. Um, yeah. So, is that okay, Avinas? Yeah. Okay. All right. Shall we? Any other question? Okay. So let's, let's go to our notes. Sorry, I just project the notes. Okay. All right. So, you know, life group, especially the family life groups, what do we do with our children? Children are a problem, or what are they? They will keep crying. Are they going to keep disturbing the meeting? Now, 
here's a, something that we can be motivated in. The presence of children and young people is the arrival of the next generation. Right? Uh, so it is our, it's up to us. Uh, it's in our hands how we release them and do things for their life, for their futures. Right? Rav Neighbor says, there is no further excuse for delaying the equipping of every saint for the work of the ministry. And the word there is every saint, which includes children and young people. Now, there are going to be challenges. Now, say a family comes to a life group. There's a three-year-old and a one-year-old. This is going to be challenges. Right? Uh, then another family may come with a nine-year-old and a seven-year-old. Right? Now, here's what we must do. Right. I'm, I'm going to give a few pointers. First one, don't estimate, underestimate the spiritual capabilities of children. Children are really, you know, they understand, especially the generation that we are living in now, they understand so clearly. Right? Uh, and, you know, I was talking to my, my son. He's seven. He keeps asking me things about Trinity, and I asked him, what do you understand about Trinity? Here's what he said. He said, the Trinity is God in three persons. So I said, can you give me an example? And he was able to explain the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and what they are. He's seven years old. Now, it's not that I have taught him. Right? I have spoken to him. I keep you know, playing these videos and all of it. But all of it he's learned from children's church. Right? And I and I thought to myself, wow, children are able to understand spiritual truth so much. Right? So you and I have a responsibility for the next generation. We have to build our next generation. So we want our children to be discipled. Now, how do we do that in a cell group? Uh, some of the ways, some of the things that we can do. Firstly, is if they are, you know, above, you can keep a, you know, certain number. You can say probably five or six years and above. They can be part of the worship, right? Uh, they can be part of the worship. Two is if there are more than maybe three, four kids. You know, if you have a children's church team or a children's church pastor or anybody, uh, you can you know get resources for them separately, so that you know when we you're having a life group, they can meet, uh, and one uh, adult can you know just uh, make sure that they are also. It's not like you bring crayons and colors and they keep coloring. No, they also uh, are in a place where they learn God's word in that cell group. Right, so uh, children below five, you can bring crayons and snacks and all that. That's that. That's okay. But children who are growing up, like six, seven, eight years old, nine years old, get them into the word. Get right resources. Right. Uh, get them to, uh, you know, uh, in a in a like what you do in a children's church. Uh, do the same thing for them there, in a cell group. Let them know. Okay, you come do the declaration. These are points we're going to discuss on. Now, it need not be the Sunday sermon, right? Obviously, because uh, it may be something which they may not understand. But it can be something very important. Now, here comes the preparation. Right? So, for example, there are 12 in the life group and there are five children. So one person is in charge every week to minister to the children. So what that person must do is he or she must take up a topic, come up with two, three questions, and basically lead the children. Right? Now, there's a reason why we want children to be part of the worship and the prayer times. Why? Because they can learn just by observing. observing. They can really learn by observing. Right? Uh, and, and here's an example. You know, when we were in Mangalore, uh, we were a small church, about 50, 60 people, 40, 50, and then eventually we grew. And my little one, my first son, he was probably about three and a half, four years old. 
and every Sunday we used to come to church. It's a small church, so there's only about 50 odd people, but we had a drum kit. And all he would do throughout the worship is sit and stare at the drummer. He would keep looking at the drummer. I didn't know. I didn't realize it because I'm leading worship or I'm probably doing something else. So, he, But he would sit in another place it's right in front of the drummer and he'd keep watching him. He did that all through his four years old, all through five years old and six years old. Right? Then the lockdown had come. Right. So, uh, so what happened was, uh, you know, that was my personal drum kit. So I brought it home, thinking I will practice, um, and you know, develop myself, and uh, uh, you know, during the lockdown. So I brought the drum kit home. I remember this boy. He was six years old, right? He sat on the drum kit, and he started playing, and I was shocked. But right? uh, uh, it's not. I'm not saying this because he's my son, and I'm bragging about it. No, but really, uh, he started playing things that people play after two, three years of music classes. But he tiny, couldn't reach the symbols, but he was really playing well. And I took a video and I said, I I said to him, how did you learn all of this? You didn't have a drum kit. How do you learn? He said, I used to sit in front of the drummer. No, I've, I've watched everything. And and right now, he, he plays for children's church in the church that we go to. But he's so good. He's, so, he's not going for any classes. He's really good. And all by observing. And he keeps, uh, you know, uh, children in the children's church keep saying, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they know the declaration by heart. They know how to pray. They know how to speak in tongues. They know how to minister to people, pray for people, all by watching and learning. So during the ministry of the word, you know, make sure that we don't look at children as, you know, okay, oh, they may not understand. No, they understand. They know. Right? The mistake that I made is I say, oh, the kids are small. They don't know. They they understand. They really do. Right? So keep somebody in charge. They can, uh, you know, you can have one person each, uh, each week. Every time you meet for cell group, one adult, uh, you know, make it exciting, make it meaningful, where children will really get an opportunity to share and minister. And also here it says, give give children uh, the opportunity to stand and preach, right? Let them stand. Let them, you know, all the stage fear and all those things that were there, everything will go away. So give them opportunities. Uh, uh, make the whole life group creative, exciting, meaningful, and God focused. Right. So, so it's not like okay, you know, children. Uh, you know, because I remember there's this life group that I went to, and there's this nine or ten year old boy. There were two, three of them, and they were sitting in another room, and they were playing Rubik's cube. And you know those uh, indoor games, chess, and all of that. I remember saying, "No, no, this is. I mean, they can do all that, but this is a group, and we need to minister to them as well, right? They need to learn, they need to see, they need to grow, and so that's something that you can do. Now, this involves a lot of planning, but the moment you have two, three children, go ahead, do it. You never know because you know, five years, ten years down the line." those kids will grow up as teens and youth and they'll remember hey when i was small i used to go to the cell group and as they're growing up you know it really will impact their lives they'll be really able to stand on the truths of god word god's word right so you can think of that as well right uh let's get into this the cell leader uh and we have a life group leaders training. We'll just look at these two points and we'll close for today. Responsibilities of the cell group leader. Right? Uh, these are basic responsibilities. One, prepare for the cell group meetings, which means you we saw those questions. Um, prepare for them, right? Prepare for the word. If you have additional pointers, you can add them, add additional questions if you'd like, uh, in line with the su Sunday sermon guide the discussions of the cell meeting right 
So you are the leader and the mentor. So set a godly example. Very important. Right? Influence through your life context. Set a godly example. Uh, now, why? Because people will see our life. Right? If if we are talking rudely, we are talking arrogantly, using you know offensive language, or uh, you know. Uh, we're not setting a right example, right? You are the leader, you are the mentor. Set a good example. Pray for the cell group members. Uh, follow up with the individuals during the week, either by phone, email, um, or you can visit them if they are okay with it. Now we look at what's happening around us. Everyone are working Monday to Friday. Uh, so they may not prefer visits, but emails, phone call, WhatsApp, all these things make uh, connectivity very easy. Uh, lead cell members in ministry and outreaches. Like I said before, we have life groups that go to children's homes, life groups that go to destitute homes, old age homes. Uh, and so you can lead them, encouraging cell groups to evangelize. Uh, and these can be done, especially during Christmas and Easter and times, and even other times you can do that as well. Develop cell members into leaders. Get them to start their own cells. Don't keep them in the nest saying, oh, you belong here itself. No, when you can identify people who can become leaders, develop them into leaders and release them. You know, sometimes you may feel, oh, man, there are 12 in my life. group. These two are good leaders. They can become good leaders. But if they go, who will look after? You know, They do so much for my life group. Who will do this? You know, don't feel that God will bring people. God will raise up. You can raise up other people to do other things, right? So release them into let get them to start their cell groups. Uh, minister ministering to the needs of cell groups, which means counseling, supporting, and then there are times when things may uh, you know ex need additional uh, you know help, you know additional counseling. So so for example, there's a youth. He says, "Hey, I'm suicidal." I'm kind of depressed, suicidal. It's been happening over a year. Now you can minister to them, uh, but if you see that it's a constant thing, the wise thing to do is connect them to a professional Christian counselor, because they will know how to deal with this. I don't say no. You are part of my life group. Only I must minister to you or the church pastor. No, right? you you must lead them to the right person. Right counseling right if there's a couple that is going through a bad time and they're you know it's leading to a divorce and you know it uh, uh, if you feel you're you're not able to you know give that additional help lead them to the pastor or lead them to the right counselors by doing that you're saving their marriage right it's not like uh, I'm protecting my ego and saying okay no I'll only minister they have to come to me only no right uh, be open to uh, uh, helping going that additional step impart the vision of the church every every week or every time you all meet just say hey you know you can make it very informal you don't have to say oh, this is the vision of the church let's no you can just say hey let's remember that as a church this is what we want to do this is our vision this is the mission that we have so you just putting it across in the right way. Uh, be accountable to your cell pastor and to the church. Now, reports, as I said, we don't follow that. But uh, if there are difficulties, if there are challenges, if there are questions that are there, uh, the cell pastors must always be available. And as leaders, you can be accountable to the cell pastor. Right? Personal life and character. Uh, we'll talk about more on this, but just a few things. Be an example, be a model. Uh, leaders produce their own kind. If there's a leader who's always angry and offensive, and you, you'll, it's very likely that the leader that he will raise up will be the same. So uh, remember that we must set the example. Have a passion. Plus, uh, have a passion for what you're doing. A passion who uh, a cell group minister leader must be passionate about the vision of the cell group must be passionate about uh, you know why he or she 
has the cell group and how, what impact they're making towards the body of Christ as a passion, right? uh, intense driving, a conviction that demands action. Right? Uh, every time that passion dies, is you sense it's dying off, go back to the word and go back to scripture, go back to God and say, God, refuel, re-energize. Uh, Paul says, fan into flame. Right? So it's something that we must do. We can't say, oh, passion is not there now. No. We must fan into flame. Fan and say, God, somewhere I feel the passion to read your word or to pray is going. It's, it's not there like how it was before. We must fan into flame. Right? And finally, conviction. Uh, as the leader is, uh, you know, a cell that is full of life is led by a leader driven by conviction. Uh, be convinced that your ministry to the 12 in the cell can make a difference in people's lives, right? Uh, don't feel that, oh, only 12. When will I become the pastor of a church with a uh, thousand people? If that's God, God's calling you for, start with the 12. Be convicted that you can you know, make a difference in 12 people's life. Then God can give you bigger things, right? So... We'll talk more about personal life and character in section two. Uh, uh, right. So, any questions? Any questions? Any thoughts you'd like to share? Or we can just close in prayer. Okay. Hope says In our church, we have 68 cell groups and 30 cell groups for children. Oh, thank you so much for sharing, Hope. Yes, that's wonderful. Involving children in cell groups are very important. Yes, very true, very true. Right. Yes. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. All right, let's close. Uh, today we'll, uh, we'll meet next week and continue from where we stop. Let's also pray for Abhinas. He celebrates his birthday today. Uh, let's just pray a blessing over his life. Right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for what we have learned today. Uh, I pray, God, that you will continue to impart, empower, equip us, Lord. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Give us the passion, the zeal, the wisdom, Lord, to lead your people in the right way, O oh God. Lord, help us, Lord. We need your Holy Spirit. We thank you. We thank you for that each one of us are called to minister, whether we are uh, in ministry, whether in the, we are in the workplace. Uh, we all are called to minister, Lord. Give us opportunities. Give us the grace that we need, O oh Lord, to do this, O oh Father. Lord, we thank you for what we have studied today, Lord, and we especially want to lift up Abhinas into your hands. Even as he celebrates his birthday today, God, we just speak your blessing over his life. We pray, God, that you will just continue to release your, your word, your revelations into his heart. That, Lord, even as he steps into this new year, we just declare that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than he can ask, think, or imagine by the power of your Holy Spirit that is working in and through his life, O oh God. We thank you, Father, for uh, the equipping that he's receiving and pray, Lord, that you will use him for your glory, O oh God. We pray for each and every student, O oh God. Thank you for your grace, your wisdom, and your you're empowering over each of our lives, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful week ahead. We'll catch up next Tuesday. God bless.